Hi y'all, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me reduce that a little bit. Um, yeah, this feels good, it feels familiar, it feels too like home. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome. Welcome to day one of 30, of Holy 30. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Holy 30. I am excited to have you here. I am so happy that you took the step. I am so happy that God is going to do great things. So many things are making me happy right now. I'm just happy to be here, if I'm being honest. I'm just happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. And I'm happy to see the Holy Spirit moving. You cannot tell that it's 6 in the morning. I'm like pumped. I'm like super pumped. And honestly, we just had a time of prayer. By the way, I would like to formally apologize again to every single person that missed, missed prayer because Zoom had a maximum capacity of 100 people and, you know, human mind me didn't think that, oh my day, maybe we're going to exceed 100 people. I thought, hey, it's 5 a.m., you know? Um, so again, small thing, I am so sorry. Like, I really am very sorry and I'm making a plan. From here on, we're going to be using Teams. I believe people should suggest that we use MS Teams because MS Teams allows up to a thousand people, I think. So, hey, gonna make room. God will do what he does. And again, I am so, 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 so sorry. Um, If you weren't at prayer this morning, we prayed on... Did I write the scriptures down? Okay, I didn't write them down, but I think I can remember them. We prayed on John chapter 3, verse 34, um, which says... God gives a spirit without measure. John 3, 34, spirit without measure. And then Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then Luke, 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 what do you pray about? Luke 24, 49, tarry ye until ye are endued with power. That's what we prayed on. The first prayer point that we prayed for, um, we prayed that we should receive God's spirit without measure. We were basically insisting on the spirit of God, like praying that Holy Spirit come upon us, do what only you can do. Like Holy Spirit, we cannot do this without you because we cannot. So we're just praying truly that the Holy Spirit might reveal himself and manifest himself. And then the second prayer point, we prayed um, just laying hands on ourselves and praying against any lie of the enemy that threatens to take away the truth about who God is. So like, if anxiety is lying to you, saying that God is the one who gives you anxiety, we pray that and bound, bound that anxiety and declare that God is the God of peace. So if you are faced with something that is contrary to who God says he is, we pray against those things and pray that really we start on a clean slate and ask God to open up our eyes um, so that we're able to experience him anew. You know, that everything that we have, any preconceived ideas that we might have, we kind of laid them down and prayed afresh. So, yeah, please do take some time and pray on those points. We spent about 30 minutes in prayer. So just take some time and pray on that. I am sorry. Again, truly, this is not my first time, my second time, and I'm still trying to figure it out. So bear with me. You know, I'm a team of one. <laughs> so, I mean, with the Holy Spirit and them, but like... I'm a team of one, so I'm trying to figure it out. So please bear with me. But um, yeah, welcome back. Welcome to Holy 13. Again, my name is Nyeleti. And I am a servant of the living God. <laughs> I love Jesus, man. I love Jesus. And I love this. And I love to serve him. And I love, 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 love to tell people about Jesus. And to kind of bring people closer to Jesus. If you meet me and as a result, you want to pursue a relationship with God then I've done my part. But if you meet me and you like me more than Jesus, then I'm doing something wrong. So please tell me. Um, if you meet me, you have to like Jesus more than you like me. You know? So yeah, anyways, Holy 30, we are back. We're in Acts chapter one today. Woohoo, Acts is, is a great book. I think I'll just give a brief, kind of a brief synopsis of what the book is about. Um, it's basically about the, the, it's the history of the early church. So the book of Acts speaks to the coming of the Holy Spirit and how the church that we know today started, you know, um, the church that we have today that we call the big C church, like the big church, uh, the global church started in the book of Acts. Or oh, we know about it because of the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a fulfillment of the Great Commission, right? Jesus gives the Great Commission and says, go into the ends of the earth, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you see the disciples do that throughout the book of Acts. Um, the book of Acts is written by a, name man, a man <laughs> named Luke. 
so if you read the book of luke uh at the end you will see that it literally where it ends off that's where the book of acts kind of begins um because there were there were one book it used to be one long book the book of luke and acts and then it was broken apart and now we know them as the gospel of luke and the book of acts so it was written by luke luke was actually not a disciple of jesus christ luke was a companion of paul say a disciple of paul and he wrote luke and acts when he was with um paul and then he would do research and all these things and um, learn about the early church and learn about jesus and then he came to write luke and acts i think also it, it's just a um, life story or paul's life story rather you know um because if you read the gospels and then you jump to paul to romans it's kind of like a gap right because romans begins and this guy named paul is now speaking and you're like okay who's this person so the book of acts kind of paints that picture of who this man named paul is and we get to meet him as well so yeah the book of acts is great i think it's so powerful um the reason why we're doing the book of acts truly is because i want us to see or it was placed on my heart rather that we should get to experience how the holy spirit moves through people how the holy spirit uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things because everything that we read about in the book of Acts is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the lovely thing about the book of Acts is that at the beginning, you meet the Holy Spirit. And then you see how he begins to work throughout until the end. Through every single person, every single encounter, you get to see the work of the Holy Spirit. And I just think it's so beautiful. It's so marvelous. Um, so yeah, we're in the book of Acts. I thought I'd just give a little bit of background so you know, you know exactly where we are in time. I think it was written last time when i checked it was written six between 61 to 64 a.d so 60 years after the death of christ is when the book of acts was written um so yeah kind of paints a picture in history of like where we are at put context into it and um yeah it's also called the acts of the apostles because the acts of the disciples yeah i mean are you, are you getting it i'm getting it yeah <laughs> so let's pray and then we get into it we won't be too long um so yeah heavenly father come before you this wonderful day we just want to say thank you for the gift of your word god we thank you that through your word you are able to experience you get to know you more you said your word is spirit breathed and is useful for correcting rebuking and a whole lot of things so holy spirit we pray this moment that let that be true for us as we read your word let it do the work that it needs to do in us as we read your word more than anything holy spirit may we get to know you more and experience your power and experience you more we love you holy spirit and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to even come together and get to know you you are so cool you're so kind you're so loving to us and we don't deserve you but you still pour yourself out over us without measure holy spirit more than anything i pray that you do what only you can do disrupt any program timetable anything disrupt it so that you do what only you can do be god over us do what only you can do holy spirit pour yourself out on us without measure you are so welcome in this place you're so welcome in our hearts holy spirit we love you in jesus name we pray amen don't you just love the holy spirit guys the holy spirit is so sweet he is so sweet like oh my days last night i was in prayer i'm not gonna cry actually no 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 i'm gonna do that last night i was in prayer <sighs> i was in prayer and man it just felt like i don't know it's like i felt the stillness of the holy spirit like it, it was like sorry about that so last night i was in prayer and genuinely guys it was so crazy like the holy spirit is so good he's so sweet he's so kind and i absolutely love him I absolutely love him anyways let's get into it okay because even my phone is cutting cutting now um acts we're just gonna do act one to eleven you know nothing crazy if you're taking notes the title of today's bible study it's not so much a bible study as it is a charge let's fix that um just the charge to kind of get us started on this 30 days if you're taking notes today we've titled tari tari <laughs> my friends and i my friends and i love saying that so tari t-r-r-y t-a-r-r-y and then ye 
Y-E. I'm in the King James version now, so I'm about to speak King James and it's about to be lit. The title is Terry Yee. Terry Yee. Terry Yee. That's the title of today's Bible study. And Webster, Merriam Webster defines tarrying as to linger in expectation or lingering in expectation to wait to abide or to stay in or at a place to wait in expectation to linger and wait in expectation and where we find this is in luke 14 49 where jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says tarry in jerusalem until ye are endued with power so he says tarry stay in jerusalem until you are endued with power until you are given power until you are empowered and he spoke of the holy spirit who would then come on and you know so yeah the idea behind today's bible study truly more than anything is to get you to understand one how much you need the holy spirit and two to plead with you to stay long enough until you see him or experience him to stay long enough until you get to see the fullness of his power and his love. Stay long enough. Just tarry. Linger in expectation of what God, not even what he can do, but of who he is. Because I promise you, once you experience who he is, what he can do becomes immeasurable and limitless. But first you must experience who he is. And so we're in Acts chapter 1. Um, I'll read, let's see, Acts chapter 1. Verse 1 to 2. It says, I'm reading the New King James Version. Or maybe I should read. Yeah, let me read the NIV. Um, it says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Here, Luke is saying, Hey, he's writing to a main man named Theophilus. We don't really know who Theophilus was, um, but we know that he was someone important. And Paul is right, uh, sorry, Luke is writing to this man named Theophilus and he's telling him all these stories and these accounts. And so he says, in my former book, the former book is the book of Luke. Remember, there's the book of Luke and then Acts, all written by one person. So he says, in my former book, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and teach, which is true. If you read the book of Luke, you see the ministry of Jesus Christ. So he says, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. What do we learn here? We learn that Jesus also operated under the inspiration and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not operate on his own. Also, he relied on the power of the Holy Spirit to even instruct the disciples on what to do. So everything that he spoke, everything that he did, anything that Jesus did, was through the empowerment of the holy spirit and he knew that he relied on the holy spirit remember in matthew chapter 3 when jesus gets baptized before he even begins his ministry he gets baptized and it says like a dove the spirit came like a dove and rested upon him and a voice came from heaven and said, this is my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Before Jesus even began his ministry, the spirit had to come and rest on him like a dove and empower everything, every action that he was about to take. So in the very same way with us, if Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit, how much more us? We are not in Jesus. We're not even close to, you know, the power of Jesus. We, we're not Jesus, period. So how much more do we need the Holy Spirit? How much more do we need to rely on the power of the holy spirit and yet we go on about our days about our lives without even communing with the holy spirit without even talking to the holy spirit we don't even know the holy spirit we don't even take time to sit with him and jesus couldn't even begin his ministry until he was empowered by the holy spirit and he's jesus so in the same way before we even get into any of this we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit. I am telling you, the Holy Spirit is what makes this effective, is who makes this effective. I can sit here and preach until I'm blue in the face. If it is not backed and empowered by the Holy Spirit, it becomes ineffective. You can read the Bible and search and look. If it is not backed and empowered by the Holy Spirit, it is ineffective. You can pray for 20 hours. If that prayer is not backed and empowered by the Holy Spirit, it is ineffective. The Holy Spirit is the effectiveness of our prayers. 
He's the effectiveness of our pursuit. He's the effectiveness of the way that we live out our lives. A Christian life lived outside of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is guaranteed to fail. Because we don't have Jesus walking right next to us like the disciples did. God is not with us. But the Holy Spirit is. The Spirit of God is in us and with us. And he's the one who empowers us. He, he, he gives us the power to fight against sin. He gives us the power to seek him. He gives us the power to pursue Jesus. He gives us the power and the wisdom to get to know God and Jesus. We cannot even get to know Jesus outside of the revelation that the Spirit gives us. Right? So we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the spirit of the living God. In verse 3, it says, um, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Again, this is speaking about Jesus, that um, he gave them many proofs, showed them many signs that indeed he was who he said he was, period. Um, and appeared to them. And Jesus stayed with them for 40 days before he ascended to heaven. So he dies three days, resurrects, 40 days with the disciples, and then goes to heaven. Um, verse 4 says, On occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Listen to this. He gave them this command, verse 4. He says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, listen, this is the last, imagine the last command that Jesus gives the disciples. Like he commands them a lot of things like go out into the nations, make disciples, do all these things. Like he commands them and we love one another. There's so many commands that Jesus gives, but the last command that he gives, oh, thank you, Jesus. The last command that he gives before he ascends, he says, wait for the Holy Spirit because he knew he knew that without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, every other command that he had given them, they would not be able to do it. They would not be able to fulfill it. Every other thing that Jesus has taught them and has showed them, every other thing would not be able to come to pass unless the Holy Spirit empowers them. He knew. So he says, listen, I know you've seen me, you know I've read I know you know, and you're really excited to go share the gospel, all these things. That gospel is ineffective if you don't wait for this one that I'm telling you to wait for. If you don't wait for this gift of the Father, everything you do is ineffective. So the last, the last command that Jesus gives is to wait for the Holy Spirit. So wait for the Holy Spirit. He says, wait, wait. Just wait in jerusalem for the and when jesus is speaking to them here they are on mount olive and if you know anything about mount olive if you did um the previous holy Thursday with us in the book of john mount olive is the mountain where jesus prayed a lot he would go to the mount of olives and he would pray there so he's speaking to them at the mount of olives and he says you know i'll go back to jerusalem and wait there for the holy spirit to come and now in jerusalem Jerusalem is where Jesus faced a lot of persecution. Like Jerusalem was just not the best place for the disciples to be in. But he says, wait, go back to Jerusalem. Wait there. And right there where you think nothing can happen, right there, that is where the Holy Spirit will come and visit you. Wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. Go wait in Jerusalem until you receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And it's the same for us. Wait. Tarry. Luke 14, 49 says the exact same thing. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Wait, wait with expectation of this one that the Father has promised. It's a gift that the Father has promised, a gift. We cannot manipulate the Holy Spirit. We cannot twist his arm to show up. We cannot do any weird things for the Holy Spirit to show up. He is a gift from the Father. All we can do is wait, seek, and then receive when he comes. And the beautiful thing is that the disciples here were still waiting. For us, we know that he has come. All we have to do is receive him, right? All we have to do is receive him and allow him to take full ownership over our lives. Verse 5 says, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Same thing, like baptism of water happens there and there and you keep on moving. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is continuous. You're continually drenched in the spirit of the living God. The Bible in the book of Ephesians talks about how we should be drunk in the Holy Spirit. Continually, continually under the influence of the Holy Spirit. 
baptism in the holy spirit is saying every single day i am walking deranged in the spirit i have no control over my life over anything he is my thought process he is my perception he is my eyes my ears the holy spirit is everything he's my mouth i cannot do anything outside of him because he is everything right that is that is baptism in the holy spirit we think and truly i've seen the church does this a lot we believe that baptism in the holy spirit is simply speaking in tongues that is a sign yes that you're baptized in the holy spirit but there are tongue tongue speaking people who lack the gentleness of the spirit who lack the wisdom of the spirit who lack the guidance of the spirit who are still walking in the flesh while speaking in tongues speaking in tongues is a sign of the baptism of the holy spirit but that's not the be it be all baptism in the holy spirit is are you drenched in the holy spirit has the holy spirit taken full control of your life when he speaks about being drunk when you are drunk you're under the influence like you literally are you are controlled by the substance that you've taken in the same way when you're drunk with the holy spirit you are in control or being controlled by the spirit and under the influence of the holy spirit right verse six says then they gathered around him and asked him lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of israel who well, i wish you had time to unpack all these things because well he said to them it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has said by his own authority and then verse 8 he says but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth he says listen it is not the times and the things and the seasons is really none of your business <laughs> jesus i love him he says it's not for you to worry about when and why and what god why did you do this when are you gonna do? he says it's not for you the only thing that you need to worry about right now is waiting and insisting on the spirit of the living god and he says you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and that power as a result you will be my witnesses listen anything that we want to do for jesus christ right it has to be empowered by the holy spirit and the holy spirit when we've received the holy spirit our reaction should be to witness because it says you will receive power and then you will be my witnesses it doesn't say maybe you'll be my witnesses or maybe like you know whatever you feel like it says you will be my witnesses how many of us have been empowered by the holy spirit and refused to witness to other people Anyways, let me not go there. Let me not go there. <laughs> what I am saying is, it's not up to us to worry about times and whys and all these things and whens and all these things. It is up to us to wait on the Holy Spirit. Insist on the Holy Spirit. Guys, oh my days, ask the Holy Spirit. Really, truly. Verse 9 to 11 says, After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes and the cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. These two men are believed to be angels. Um, men of Galilee, they asked, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into the heaven. So he will come back physically. He will come back on the clouds he will come back the same jesus which is so cool to me um but i think the idea behind today's bible study is simply this wait tarry insist the term insist insist on the holy spirit insist on the holy spirit stay long enough to experience him stay long enough to see him stay long enough to know him because i promise you like it's just mm, yeah he wants to reveal himself i shared this at the prayer this morning that the holy spirit wants to reveal himself god wants to blow our minds he really does but then he's looking for people who will just wait a little bit stay a little bit in his presence to experience the fullness of who he is and so i pray if you have no experience of who the holy spirit is we'll dive more into the character and the person of the holy spirit as we progress but if you kind of need an idea read john 14 john 14 through 16 jesus pretty much highlights who the holy spirit is and the character of the holy spirit what he does and all these things so read through that but he is literally he is the breath in your lungs okay 
without him you can do absolutely nothing and i need you to understand this that without the empowerment of the holy spirit without the partnership of the holy spirit the next 30 days are useless the next 30 days are just nothing's gonna happen you'll come out of here exactly the same without the empowerment of the holy spirit so even as you progress even as you progress in your day sit down and like say holy spirit like visit me ask him to come just say holy spirit show yourself to me i want to see you i pray holy spirit please visit us pay us a visit come and show us who you are reveal yourself to us we want to see you we want to know you we just want to experience you and i pray for every single person on here that as we progress throughout the day and throughout the challenge show yourself to us holy spirit we want to know you we are taking time to insist to tarry we pray this in the name of jesus thank you amen 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 thank you so much guys um yeah all communication was via email if you have any queries please do comment them I'll do my best to respond or DM me. I'll also do my best to respond. We'll fix the prayer issue. Um, the email that I sent out yesterday has all the rules and everything and how you can fully take part in this challenge. Invite a friend. Don't do this by yourself. Do it with someone. Tell someone about Jesus and insist on the Holy Spirit. I love you guys and I am praying for you that your faith does not fail. Okay, you got this. We can do this. Day one, before you know it, it's going to be day 30. You will be some tongue-speaking, fire-blazing, guns-blazing Christian. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I love you. Jesus loves you. And I will see you tomorrow.